Guys, it's Fonzie with DipYourCar.com, world famous peelable auto paints. Now, a while back on the channel, we introduced the first person view. We thought it would give you guys a really good perspective on exactly what I'm seeing, my distance from the car when I'm spraying, how the product's wetting out on the surface, my spraying speed, how I'm holding the gun, and a lot of you guys seem to really love it. The response was overwhelmingly positive, which is great. And then the requests started coming in. Lots of people asking for us to do an entire process from the beginning to the end on dipping a car using the first person view experience and that's what we're doing in this video. You're literally going to see everything that I see from the time that I wash the car, prep and mask the car, spray the car, break it down and have it ready for the road. So this will be a very interesting video. I really hope you guys enjoy it. It's time to go first person view. Okay, we're now in first person view. The first thing I'm gonna do is go over my pro car kit here. Today we're gonna to be working on our Audi S4, which is about a medium sized sedan, and we're gonna be using the medium sized pro car kit. We're gonna be doing the color Onyx Performance Series, which is a really beautiful, dark, aggressive metallic gray. I think it'll look great on the S4. Now we have a bunch of different size pro car kits, small, medium, large, and extra large. So depending on the size of the vehicle that you're working on, make sure you get the right size pro car kit and it'll, it'll include basically everything you need to get the job done. So what do I have here? I've got two gallons of Onyx Performance Series. I've got two gallons of gunmetal gray Plasti Dip Spray and the Performance Series is going to be for my color on top and the Plasti Dip Spray gunmetal gray is going to be for my base coats. I've got pre-dip spray here. This bottle is gonna be used to clean the car before I spray it. I've got my Pro Car Kit accessory bag here. And in here we've got a mixing stick, a bottle of pre-wash. This is what we're gonna to use to wash the vehicle before we spray it. Microfiber towel, blue painter's tape, some cone filters, the dip washer, which we'll use to wash the car after it's dipped. And that's it for inside the goodie bag. Now I've got my advanced dip sprayer system here. And as you can tell, we've used this one for a whole bunch of different cars. When you get a pro car kit, you can either get it with no sprayer, with the regular dip sprayer system, or you can upgrade to the advanced dip sprayer system. And this one's obviously gonna give you a better uh, end result and higher performance. This is the one I prefer to use and I use it in all the videos. Now I've got a couple extra items here that are not included in the pro car kit, but I would strongly suggest adding them this is the yellow painter's tape. We're gonna use this for a lot of edge work and masking. And this is tape and drape, which is basically a big sheet of plastic material with some tape on the top. That's gonna to really help us mask off some of the larger surface areas. So these are all the materials that we're gonna use. First things first, we need to wash the car and make sure it's perfectly clean. So let's go wash the S4. Now washing your car before you dip it is all about timing. It's critical that the car is completely bone dry before you start spraying it. So what you always want to do is wash the car 24 hours before you spray it. So right now it's about two o'clock. We're going to wash this car. Then we're going to leave it overnight and then start masking and spraying tomorrow. Okay, so here's the car. And obviously the point of washing the car is to get any dirt, any grease, any grime, anything off the surface. So we have a nice, clean, smooth surface to dip over. So I've got a gallon bucket here. I've got my pre-wash bottle and there's really simple signs here. Just going to drop the pre-wash right into the bucket and it'll properly treat about a gallon or two of water. So we're going to fill up the, the bucket here with about a gallon of water. Okay. Got a washman here and just like you normally would, we're going to go ahead and wash the surface of the car. Just make sure you don't miss any spots. Okay, now you're gonna use your hose or your pressure washer. You're gonna rinse the car off really well. Okay, it's the next day. The car has gotten a full overnight run to completely bone dry. Now it's time to start 
masking the car. I'm here with Gabe, our retail and shop manager. He's the one who normally does the majority of the masking on our cars. Sometimes I work with him on it. So we're gonna go ahead and start masking all the different elements on this car and walk you through as much of that as we can. As you can see, Gabe's already got that tape and drape that we talked about, and he's gonna start masking off the inside of the engine bay. You don't want any overspray making its way in there and settling on the engine bay. Here's how it works. The more you mask, the more attention you put into the masking, the less time and attention you have to put into the cleanup when it's time to peel and remove the, the, the Plasti Dip. If you put all the time and energy into masking the car properly, overspray won't get in between panels, overspray won't get into areas that you don't want it to be, and when it's time to peel the car, there'll be very little to clean up at the end. If you half-ass the masking, of course, it's gonna be the opposite, and you're gonna to need to put a little bit more time and energy into the cleanup. So, Gabe's gonna be working on this over here. I'm gonna grab some tape and drape myself and start working on the windows. What we usually like to do is pretty simple. Just start the tape and drape along the top area of the window trim. And we're gonna leave a little bit of space here because I'm gonna come back in with uh, the blue tape and maybe even some of that yellow tape and edge everything off. And we're just gonna slowly work the tape and drape around this area. And obviously every car is gonna have different window trim, different front bumpers, rear bumpers, diffusers, all sorts of different things, but the principles as far as masking are usually pretty similar. I'm just gonna trim this off here. Now I'm gonna go back in and grab Now I've got my blue tape and my yellow tape. I'm gonna start unfolding the tape and drape just to about the area where the bottom window trim is so that we leave all the excess up here. And we're gonna seal off the tape and drape with the blue tape first. Again, you can leave a little area down here because we're probably gonna go in with that yellow tape and do some edge work. The yellow tape just has a crisper line, a stronger adhesive, and it's just better for those all around edges. It's also a little more chemical resistant than this blue masking tape. That's why we like to use it in those critical areas. And then right here, you see how this edge of this Tape and drape is kind of overlapping and touching the edge of the car. You want to make sure you don't have anything like that going on. Nice and clean all the way around. I'm going to seal this up nice. And again, we'll use the yellow to edge that off. Now you want to make sure that all the plastic is sealed off so that the overspray doesn't get in anywhere. It can be very sneaky. Even if you think that it's completely sealed off, if there's a little crack left over, it'll make its way in there. So for the mirrors, it really depends on your own vehicle. Now, with this car, the mirrors are a brushed aluminum and they have a little bit of black trim on them. We like to leave that. It kind of works well with most of the colors that we're doing as a contrast. So we're actually gonna bring our tape and drape around and we're gonna seal that mirror inside. Creates a little bit of a tight spot under here, but if you're careful, you can seal it up real nice. When you get to corners, I like to work just little pieces at a time. It's a lot easier to work with than trying to cover large surface areas. Now it's okay if this doesn't look too pretty and you don't have a nice flush edge because again, not to be repetitive, but we're gonna come back with that yellow tape and seal it all off. So now we're just gonna go back, double check everything. This entire window unit should be nice and sealed off. Okay, now here's that yellow tape that we were talking about. 
this is where you want to have a lot more precision. You really want to line this yellow tape up with exactly the line that you want to create. Now there's a nice separation here between the window trim and the body of the car. This is not what we call a peel when wet area. That means that there's enough of a gap here for the plastic tip to cut itself between the window trim and the body of the car. Now the lower window trim, I'll show you in a second, is a different story. Just wanna make sure we're covering up that chrome edge, but not touching the body of the car with the yellow tape. And then come back and press it down nice and tight. And then come back up on that edge and make sure the edge is rolled down and not sticking up. Now the bottom window trim, most of the time what we found is that it's too close to the body of the car and that the plastic tip does bridge over the window trim and onto the body of the car, which if you let that dry, as the plastic tip is built up coat after coat, when you go to peel the tape and that dry plastic tip is connected here, a lot of you guys know, that will actually tear your edge here. You don't want that, you want a nice clean line. So the bottom window trim here is what we call a peel when wet section. And a peel when wet section means we're gonna remove this tape on the bottom window trim here when our last coat is still wet. And you'll see that during the spraying footage. So again, nice clean line covering that chrome edge. And you wanna to try to make peel when wet sections as large of a piece as possible. So that when you go to peel when wet, you're not picking at a lot of small pieces because that just leaves more room for error. So we're gonna make this whole bottom trim one long piece. Again, press that down, top and bottom edge. Now let's finish up the end pieces. This yellow tape is more flexible than the blue and actually handles these corners a bit better as well. Okay, and we're going to repeat the exact same process on the other side. Now Gabe's got this entire engine bay area covered with tape and drape, and he's starting to work on the large surface areas like the roof, the back windshield, and the front windshield. Normally for most vehicles, one stream of tape and drape or one sheet of tape and drape can cover the roof and the windshield. Now I'm going to start working on the taillights. I'm going to use the blue painter's tape to cover the majority of the surface area. And again, come back in with that yellow to edge it all out. All right, we've got the majority of this light covered up with the blue. Now we're going to come in with the yellow. And again, this is where you want to be really precise. You want to cover the edge of that tail light, but not make contact with the body of the car. Nice little gap there. And always make sure you press down that exposed edge of the tape. Okay, double check your work. And then again, repeat the same thing on the other tail lights. And we're going to move on to the headlights as well.
Okay, I'm gonna get started on these headlights here and Gabe's already starting to work on the grill. So let's just show them. He's got tape and drape and he's lining the outside of the grill here with the tape and drape all the way around. This is the adhesive from the tape and drape and then he's bringing it all up and in. So this entire large surface area is all protected by one piece of tape and drape. I know it's not included in the pro car kits, but it really does help save a lot of time and energy if you utilize that tape and drape tool. So he's gonna seal that off on top. And then again, that yellow tape comes in handy. He's gonna go around this edge very carefully with the yellow tape to seal it off. While he's doing that, I'm gonna start covering some of this larger surface area on the headlight with the blue tape. Now, as you can probably tell, the headlights, the taillights, a lot of parts in this car have seen better days. But if you guys have been watching this channel for a long time, you know that this particular S4 has been through a lot of testing, a lot of videos, lots of different products, and uh, still plugging away. All right, guys, we finished up the masking on the car, and I'm going to walk you through the entire process, everything that we did from the front to the back, and show you how we attacked each individual area for our masking. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can mask a car, lots of different materials you can use, a bunch of different approaches. This is just the way that we did it, so feel free to replicate this approach or adjust the approach however you see fit. Now, starting up here with the headlights, of course, we covered the majority of the surface area of the headlights with the blue masking tape and then edged around it with that yellow masking tape and on every single section, making sure that we don't let the edge of the tape make contact with the body of the car. Coming down here to this fog area, we actually masked off the fog lens itself with the blue masking tape and then we covered this large surface area by pushing in some brown masking paper underneath to the side and above this entire gap to make sure that any overspray that goes through gets caught by the brown masking paper. This brown masking paper actually comes in handy quite a bit. As you can see, we cover our entire floor with it. You can use tape and drape for this area as well. Front grill, again, covered the entire surface area with tape and drape, sealed it down underneath the hood with the blue tape, and then of course, again, all the way around the edges, Use that yellow masking tape to make sure our edges, edges are nice and tight with sharp lines. Now down here, there's a little bit of a lip area with a vent area right above it. So what we wanna do is make sure that none of the overspray goes through that vent, and we wanna actually keep this brushed aluminum lip so we have, again, a little bit more contrast off the trim. So we just covered all of this section with layers on layers of blue masking tape, making sure each layer overlap the other so that even if the tape pops up a little bit, none of the overspray is gonna go through. And always remember to mask off the underside as well because sometimes that overspray can get underneath there. Same thing over here, this headlight and this fog area mask the same way. Moving over to the wheel, we like to utilize these canvas wheel masking bags. You can get them on dipyourcar.com. They fit almost every wheel up to about a 21 to 22 inch wheel. And what they do is they go over and they just cover the wheel and tire and make sure that none of the overspray goes through. As you can see, they do a pretty darn good job. Now on some cars, this car is kind of low. There's not a lot of gap here. On some cars where you have a little bit more of a gap between the top of the tire and the bottom of the fender, we'll take some of the brown masking paper again and we'll roll it up and kind of stick it in underneath to create a barrier around this canvas wheel masking bag to make sure none of that overspray goes in. Coming up here, we covered all of the front windshield, the roof, and the back windshield utilizing the tape and drape. Really comes in handy. We actually pinned down the edges of the tape and drape with the blue masking tape and then edged it down with the yellow masking tape. Now, this is going to be one of our very few peel when wet areas on this car. That and the bottom window trim, if you remember. So, what we're going to do on that is when our last coat of the entire project is done, we're gonna peel this line of tape to make sure we create a nice crisp edge while the dip is still wet. 
Now you saw how we attacked the window and window trim area, nice and sealed up all the way around. Moving down on the car, there's nothing else left for us to mask. That wheel is covered. Now coming around to the back, we've got the tail lights. Again, large surface areas all done with the blue painter's tape and then edging around with the yellow. This license plate thing does not come off, unfortunately, on this car. So we just use the blue painter's tape on that edge to edge. Make sure that you get underneath here for your rear view camera and any lights that you have on there as well. Some people will forget that and spray right over their rear view camera. So we wanna make sure that's all masked off as well. The lower diffuser, I see a lot of people on these just layer blue masking tape back and forth and back and forth. Save a lot of time on that. Just use the tape and drape up around here. It's got a nice strong adhesive. And then what we do, if you can see that, is we tuck it underneath and then tape it up with blue painter's tape so the entire diffuser is sealed off really well. On this side, pretty much everything is the same. All we like to do is go back and double check anything. And if you see any holes or any weak areas, just drop a little bit more tape on top to seal it up. Now it's time to start prepping the car and cleaning it with the pre-dip spray. Now prepping the car with the pre-dip spray is a pretty straightforward approach. I've got my microfiber towel, I've got my bottle of pre-dip spray, and what you're gonna do is focus on just one panel at a time. What you don't wanna do is spray the whole car down and try and wipe the whole car down. We like to focus on one panel at a time because of course there's gonna be dust and debris and stuff that lands on the car, fingerprints, oils, we wanna remove all of that. So let's focus on this fender here, couple sprays in different areas. And then what I like to do is work around the edge, all the way around, follow it like a puzzle piece. And you can use your fingernail to actually push the edge of the towel inside the cracks here and there. And then I like to work from the top to bottom. Now I know this may sound a little annoying, but basically every car we've ever done, we've done two full wipe downs with pre-dip spray because you just never know when you're gonna miss a spot. Now pay special attention as you're spraying to try to just spray the surface area of the panel. Try not to spray the pre-dip inside the cracks between the panels because once you get the moisture back there, you won't be able to wipe it out or dry it off. Door handles always have extra residue and oil on them because people are touching them constantly. So spend a little bit of extra time and a little extra pressure on the door handles. Okay, this last wipe down on the hood panel is gonna be it for the pre-dip spray. We're gonna start mixing up our gallons now, making sure our sprayer is ready to go and it's time to start spraying the car. All right, guys, we're ready to start spraying. Let's do a quick checklist. We washed the car. We let the car dry for 24 hours. We masked it. We wiped the entire thing down with pre-dip spray. So we've got our advanced turbine system with the DYC gun. I've got two uh, paint cups here. It comes with one. You can always grab a second one. Saves a little time. And I've got the two gunmetal gray base coat gallons that are going to go down first. So the first thing you want to do always is make sure that you properly blend and mix each one of the gallons. We've got our air drill here. This little mixer, this blending wand, comes in the dip sprayer system box. So it's always handy to have. Now the cone filters, you always want to run the product through the cone filter as it goes into your paint cup and try not to spill it. Always helps to have a, a friend handy to hold it. Now one of the biggest things is not to overfill the paint cup. You'll see on the side that there's a 48 ounce mark. That's where you stop. A lot of people will overfill it past there even up into this collar section here. Now what happens with that is when you put the gun on and then you tilt the gun down to spray it, you have too much product in this paint cup and it actually runs up this hole right here. This hole, if you can see it, has to be clear. If it's not clear, it's not gonna pull air through, you're not gonna get suction, 
And what's going to happen is there's no product that's going to go out the front of your gun. If you're using a DYC spray gun and it's flowing out air but no product when you're pulling the trigger, 99% chance this breather hole down here is clogged. The way to fix that is to take off the front assembly of the gun. You'll see in there's a really small little breather hole. You want to take something small and thin like a metal hanger and poke it up through there if you have that jam and it'll clear it out. It's worth going over this because a lot of dippers will experience that. They'll think the gun is broken, but all you did was end up overfilling the paint cup and you got your air hole clogged. So we're going to put this on nice and tight. and make sure our spray fan is looking good. Now what I like to do is I like to dial in about a seven inch spray fan. So this is what I'm looking for here. Not only is it about the right size, but it's the right shape. You got a nice even oval pattern. You don't want to have it too heavy on the top, too heavy on the bottom, or too heavy in the middle. If that's the case, clean out all the different uh, holes here on your air cap because you got something clogged. Now we're going to spray our first coat. Now our first coat is going to be about 50 to 60% coverage. You want to go a little lighter on the first coat to let the plastic start to set up. Then you go in and heavy, wet, overlapping coats after that. Now obviously make sure you have enough room to walk safely around the car. Hopefully it goes without saying, but always use a proper respirator and breathing protection in a well-ventilated area. You don't want to spray in an enclosed environment. Now we're going to go coat by coat and see how it goes. All right, our first coat's done. That was a lighter coat. Now we're going to go on to the heavier, wetter, overlapping coats. And I want to show you exactly what I mean by that. Now, when we do a lighter coat, we're just kind of going back and forth and letting the product wet the surface out. When we're doing a wetter coat, the key is the overlap. So what we're going to do is focus on a 50-50 overlap, meaning my first spray pattern will go like this. Then we're going to want to cover 50% of that with the next spray pattern, then cover 50% of that with the next spray pattern. That way you create a nice, even, wet surface. If you think about it with Plasti Dip, if it dries in individual droplets everywhere, of course you're gonna get a texture. If it dries as one wet sheet of a coating, that's when you get that nice, buttery, smooth feel. So I'll show you what I mean. My first pass, my second pass, my third pass, my fourth pass. So as you can see, as I made a pass, I moved down. My next pass covered 50% of that, 50% of that, 50% of that. And that's what I'm going to do on each panel of the car as I go through to create a nice, even, wet surface.
All right, guys, this is after the second coat is completely dry. Now, it's really important to make sure that every single coat gets a full 20 to 30 minutes to fully flash out. You don't want to stack wet coats on top of wet coats and trap those solvents in there. So you want to make sure all the surface areas, all the little cracks and corners are all completely dry before you move on to the next coat. Now, another thing is you're going to get very quick coverage with a base coat like gunmetal gray or black. The thing is you have to make sure you use up 100% of your base gallons because first and foremost there's going to be spots on the car like this that aren't fully covered yet so you want to keep going but the most important thing when dipping your car or dipping your wheels is you want it to be durable and of course peelable and you want to use up 100 percent of all of the gallon product that you get in your pro car kit so let's move on to the next coat so we've run through our base color gallons now it's time for the performance series gallons now this is the best product you can use as a DIY customer, as you can see, it's already got metallic elements in there. It's going to give you the smoothest, highest performance finish. So we're going to mix these up really well and start spraying our performance series. All right, guys, we're on our last coat of the Onyx, and the car is already looking super sweet. Now, I want to walk you through the peel when wet sections because once we finish the coat, we're going to peel it right away, and I'm going to have my respirator on. I won't be able to talk you through it. So what I'm going to do is this. Start here on the front of the car like I always do. Lay my nice wet coat all the way around the car. I'm going to run back over here while this coat is still wet, and we're going to peel off this lower window trim. We're going to come up here and peel off this section up here. Make sure we get our nice clean lines, run over to the other side, and do the same thing. All right, guys, our last coat of Onyx is dry. We're going to go back in and start carefully breaking down all the masking. So we're going to start off just removing little bits at a time. There's no need to rush this because if there's any Plasti Dip bridged over an area that you didn't realize was there, you don't want to tear anything. You don't want to do anything that's going to require more spraying to happen. At this point, you should be totally done spraying. Nice clean breakdown, and then the car is ready for dip coat and ready for the road. No problems there. I like to kind of break down one side of the car at a time and then move over. Wheels are looking good. We did end up jamming some of that brown paper up in there right before we started the spray that I told you about. And as you can see, it does help some of that overspray come through these cracks. get this diffuser cool. 
See, the Plasti Dip actually peels right off the blue tape sometimes. And because we already peeled this yellow tape when wet, we don't have to worry about any bridging or anything here on this section. And then we're just going to move this all the way back. Pull it out from underneath the trunk. And this whole big mess can go. Now remember earlier when I told you guys that you want to try to mask off in between panels and in between doors so that the overspray doesn't go through. You want to keep those areas clean. And this is exactly what I mean by that. You just take that masking tape and you run them down in between the panels along the door sill here. And that way anything that goes through, you could just catch it. And you can see there's just a little bit of overspray there. But that's some overspray that you now don't have to clean up when you peel the car or when you break the car down. And then the larger surface area. And again, anytime you get close to an edge, just go slow. You'll see the Plasti Dip stretch before it actually breaks. So you're just looking for anything that might be bridged over. Especially on the grill here. Looks nice and clean. Good to go. Now there's brown paper down here that we shoved in. It went underneath and inside the trim area, so it should be fully protected in there. And just be careful when you remove something like this because the plastic is still a little bit soft and easy to scratch right now. So you want to be careful with something as rigid as the brown paper. Now let's get these fog lenses open. Now we've given this car about four hours to dry in the meantime because there's one last thing we want to do before we get it out on the road and that is dip coat protective spray. There literally should not be a single dipped car on the road that is not treated with dip coat. That's how big of a deal it is. It makes a huge difference in how the plastic actually feels to the touch. Now performance series actually feels pretty darn good but after dip coat it's just going to feel super slick super smooth. It's going to help protect it from scratching and marring, staining, and make it easier to clean. So with dip coat, all you do is, like I said, give it about four hours to dry minimum. A lot of people like to wait overnight. And what you're going to do is just mist each panel, one panel at a time. You don't need a lot. And you're just going to work that product in nice and gentle. If you get streaks that don't seem to go away, that means you put too much dip coat on there but you just work it in, let it evaporate. And then the difference is absolutely night and day. We're gonna go dip coat the rest of this car now. All right guys, that was basically the whole process of dipping a whole car in first person view. And I hope it helped. I hope you guys got a lot out of seeing what I see while I do the different processes during this project. And I hope most of all, it gives you guys the confidence to attack this project yourself. Yes, it's a big project and it takes some time, but as long as you follow the instructions, almost anybody can dip their own car. Now, if you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to ask. Email us customerservice at dipyourcar.com. Chat with us directly on the website or call in and speak to someone. We love talking to you guys about your dipping projects. If you want to dip your own car, click right up here. It'll bring you to the Dip Your Car Car Kits, and it includes everything you need to get the job done from the gallons, the sprayers if you need one, and the accessories. And we have a ton of awesome colors to choose from. Now let's go outside and check out the car we just sprayed. It's Fonzie. I'll see you on the next video.